Welcome to Motivational Moment. I'm Coach Rosa Smith Montanero, your training and workshop coordinator with Rochester Works. We are kicking off this new year with a new you, new and improved you. This topic this week is breaking free from the past, letting go and moving on. You know, we have to make a decision to break free. We have to make a decision to put the past behind us. We talked about that last week. How do we do that? All right, here's some specifics from my coaching experience. And my training is in mindset uh, optimization. I'm trained in neurolinguistics programming, humanistic neurolinguistic psychology, clinical hypnotherapy, all before I became a career coach. So it's a great blend of two worlds because in order to be successful, when you are changing careers, starting a new job, starting a business, you have to shift your mindset. You have to put the resentment and the anchor behind you. You have to be ready to start something brand spanking new with the best attitude so that you can break the pattern from the past and be the best you in this process. So I'm here to help you do that. I'm excited and honored, honored to be part of your journey. So the first step is acknowledging what happened, right? Acknowledging, accepting it. You know, that wasn't pleasant. It didn't feel good, but it's part of the healing process. Now, I know what it's like to get laid up. I remember, oh, a good, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 years ago, somewhere around there, I had one of the best gigs of my life. And it was a great gig. And when I say gig, as a trainer, it meant I was given the opportunity to provide training for a group of people. And I remember going into the office, I prepared all the material, I'm so excited. It was training and coaching simultaneously with this really great group of high energy people. And I remember the, uh, the owner of the company actually, he said to me, you know, Rosa, we've had some budget cuts, we've lost some important contracts and this will be your last day here. And I was like, oh, Okay, here I am trying to be happy because I don't want to affect my um, training that day. But it was such a kick in the gut, right? Because like I didn't have a backup plan. This was my gig. This was such a good gig that I didn't really work on some other projects. So I, I mean, certainly he was felt bad about it. But the bottom line is the bottom line. It wasn't personal. And then even later down the road, I had another really great training gig with a group of people. And it was a really awesome um, opportunity because there was a lot of outplacement and career management that was needed. And they needed our services. And the woman that was in charge of that project said to me, you know, Rosa, um, we have six people will be staying and because we're changing this up and we're going to reconfigure and you won't be one of them. And honestly, she didn't mind saying it to me because I never felt like I was one of her go-tos, right? She was never, she was never one of my biggest, uh, a fan of me. And so I could always sense that if, if it was up to her, I probably wouldn't have been on that team, but she really inherited me. <laughs> and it was such a kick in the gut and such a blow. So I understand. And for the longest time, you guys, when I would run into her places, she would try to hug me and say hello. And I think we are not friends. <laughs> we are not friends. You took too much joy in telling me this was my last day. Now, um, I had many other gigs since then. And I've had what's wild is I've actually been retained much longer than any of those other people that have been the ones who have said I can't stay. <laughs> but we have to accept that the painful parts of that memory is part of the process and that it taught us something, right? Because the big thing that taught me is to stop taking things personally. That it's often just, it could be a personality conflict. It could be a, re a reflection of that individual. You know, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're inadequate. It just means you're not a good match for this particular personality and it's okay. And it allowed me the freedom. This is why we forgive and move on. Because when we forgive and move on, and I did release with love. And I did have to work with the first person It was easy. Because they really felt bad. And it was, you know, due to circumstances that were, you know, budgetary. But the second one, it was, a, a you know, she chose who stayed. And, and she seemed to enjoy saying goodbye. <laughs> and that one I took personally. And it, so it taught me to not take things personally. It taught me, and I still do, I'm not going to say I'm perfect at it, 
to let go and release and forgive because it frees you up for the next part of the plan. Because in all honesty, if I didn't have that last experience, I would have never taken the time to write my book, which you know was really a big milestone for me. I would have never um, gone forward and applied for a job at Rochester Works. I wouldn't have done those things. So it worked out in our favor. And then we have to create a future from our future self. So the next piece after forgiving and releasing is look in the future and say, what does that look like? How have I benefited from that? And bring that person to now. So your assignment is to do something symbolic, like write a letter to yourself and do something symbolic about what you need to forgive and then rip it up or burn it and say, we're putting the past behind us. I hope this was useful. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe, maybe it's not the most pleasant topic, but it is very, very useful. And it could change your mindset in your life. Please give it a try. Have a great day, my friends. I'll see you next week. 